morning everyone. And I, I landed in market research because despite my stunning looks, I couldn't cut it into Bollywood. Um, so here we are, right? I mean, so I'll just share a couple of points before I get into the presentation. Um, so in a lot of what we do, we easily overlook the fact that, you know, uh, the respondents who provide a great source of market research insights and information to us are in a, in a big way, uh, the very customers or the consumers, whatever you call it, respondents, panelists, as we refer to in our many industry, uh, they are a big part of our customers. I mean, delighting them, making it easy in terms of efforts for them to share their opinions with us is something uh, that's close to what we do in the data collection industry. And uh, indirectly, it's also important for you guys as market researchers and panelists. Um, <clears throat> So before I get into the agenda, I just want to share a couple of uh, stats, slides. Um, nothing here that we are not aware of or you know we'll disagree on. Um, it's just to show the strength of you know growth in smartphone as a device and the adoption, and also uh, how there is a stunning increase in the amount of time we are spending. I mean, so between devices, between the multiple devices, I believe every one of us here is a creature of multiple devices. We operate on multi-screen and uh, the share of time that mobile is garnering is increasing at a ridiculous pace. Now all these are big numbers, you're looking at massive double digit numbers coming from uh, valid sources globally. Um, whereas here we are looking at uh, a, a bunch of statistics that's coming from within SSI. So of all the surveys that we've run across a number of markets in APAC, um, if you take away the, the numbers, if you ignore the numbers and if you just look at the bars, directionally it makes sense. There is an increasing amount of surveys that's happening in mobile, but if you look at the absolute numbers, it's um, it's exceedingly overwhelming. I mean, when I look at these numbers, um, I'm pretty disappointed that in a market like Singapore, uh, less than one in five surveys completed on a mobile phone, whereas 90% of the people are using smartphone for almost everything in their life. Um, now there is a there is there is a clear reason why this is happening. I mean, um, I'd say by far mobile is punching way below its weight when it comes to its contribution in survey taking for uh, respondents. Now this is a statistic for Indonesia, and uh, this is to emphasize the fact that we are not looking at two different sets of audience. There isn't like a mobile survey taking audience and a PC or computer survey taking audience. Uh, in Indonesia, for instance, three in four people are using both devices almost equally. Now, these are the reasons that came out when we asked people why you wouldn't take surveys on your mobile phones. Uh, there are a number of, there's a period of reasons that came up. Um, but I think there are a few which we can't control, like you know the speed of data, the access of data, and a page not loading, and those kind of things are exogenous and we can't do much about it. Uh, but what's alarming is there is a good number of things which we can pretty much control and that's not just us as the survey company but us um, as an industry at large. So one of the things that struck is uh, it's too hard to do and it's a fair point and we'll get into this uh, as we scroll through the agenda. So there are three things I'm going to cover. Um, I'm going to try and keep it um, crisp because some of the points are going to be reiterated over and over. Um, so the first point is, how can we transform the existing surveys, I mean, the typical survey that you take on your computer, how can we just shift that into mobile in a very meaningful way. Second is sampling in mobile world, and um, it's important because we are trying to delight our customers, in this case the respondents, who need to have a democracy of choosing whatever device they need and do it equally well. And the third one is how, as an industry, we can make use of our mobile device for research and do stuff that we couldn't do in the past. So this, I guess the visual gives it away. So when we're talking about uh, taking surveys on a smartphone, we're talking about shrinkage <coughs> screen size, and that's a serious real estate problem. So obviously, I mean, the kind of stuff you're going to see on a, on a massive monitor screen is uh, it's not the same um, you you'd get in terms of ease in seeing on a smartphone. Which means uh, we have to be mindful. So as researchers, when we're designing the survey, uh, when we're writing the questionnaire, or as a survey company, when we're programming the survey, when we're laying it out, we need to bear in mind um, it's got to be applicable equally well on a small screen as much as it's on a big screen. So two questions, uh, how many options is uh, one too many? Uh, there is no clear cut answer, but then I mean, it, it all has to fit in. It, it's all about aesthetics and it's all about ease. And the second one is uh, you don't want to show a scroll bar in a, in a mobile phone survey to the consumers. Um, 
points we need to bear in mind, and this is especially important in a market like Indonesia, where you know um, online research and online panel is a new and upcoming area. Not all are online panelists or someone who's been doing surveys regularly. So they're getting used to something which is new. And in a market like Indonesia, which is mobile first, um, it also means that you know they are doing probably their first survey ever online on a mobile device. So if we fail at that, uh, we are kind of training them not to come back to do surveys anymore. And that's a problem for us to get anything done in future online. Um, to add some depth, we've got this uh, ethnography study we did, and I'm just going to share a quick clip where a respondent, this is a real life respondent in UK, uh, sharing the pain points that they have when it comes to taking surveys on mobile phone. and the reality of the world we are in. One, it's, there is a claustrophobic amount of content on the screen and it's all clustered and it's cluttered. So you don't get to see all the whole uh, entire content of the survey and in a self-administered environment as online, it's absolutely essential that you know the information and the instructions are out for every respondent to read and comprehend. And the second and the more dangerous um, um, attribute that comes out of it or a behavior that comes out of it is people gravitate towards convenient answers um, which is fair play on the respondents if they're struggling on a smartphone you know they can't scroll but then it means it's going to distort the data and it's going to have an impact on the data quality and we're not talking about fraud this is a design flaw now I mean um, Sticking to the example of grid and scales, which is generally the most complex part in the in the normal surveys. Um, now, when the weight appears on a PC, um, we can do two things, right? I mean, so one, we can do nothing, which means it's going to continue to appear cluttered like this, and get even worse when we move to a mobile screen. Or we can look at a mobile redesign, and this means uh, making it sharper in terms of one, uh, the words, the instructions and just laying it out in a different way. Now the implication in doing this is, while this is from a technical standpoint, it's all doable. I mean, as an industry, we move towards device agnostic survey, where you know, by the technology itself, we make sure the surveys are com compatible and optimized for whatever device. But then we still rely on the content itself. I mean, we can't have 20 or 30 option grids, uh, which you know, it doesn't matter how you optimize, it's not fit for a smartphone. So it means reducing on uh, the content length. It also means, I mean, we can't be running those uh, 25, 30, 45 minute surveys. And believe me, I mean, 40% of the work we do is, uh, even though it's 40 minute surveys, you know, are commonplace in, in our industry. Now, just to recap that, I mean, uh, once we redesign, obviously it's a no brainer. I mean, the respondents find it more enjoyable. Um, ease, like I said, that's a key, right? I mean. All we need is honest answers from respondents. And in getting that, we need to make it as easy as possible for them to share their opinions. Um, there is less drop off, and we've got the stats supporting it. So we've done all kinds of uh, variations to study what has what kind of impact. And uh, obviously, the speed of getting things done is also a, a factor in this. Now, so one basic mantra, and uh, there's one takeaway from this section is. Whenever we design a survey, I think we should start with the smallest device and then work our way upwards. So all practical uh, pointers here, like reducing words, using bigger functional objects, you know, avoiding scrolling, and move away from lengthy cover it all kind of surveys and you know keep it as sharp and focused as possible. Now these are all things that are implementable. Um, the technology is there, I think the awareness is there. It's just the intent, which uh, we are still not there, and we just don't do enough of it. So this forms uh, what I call as the first click of a vicious uh, circle. I mean, so this is 
a case where we've got participants who want to do surveys on mobile, but we are effectively turning them away. We are training them to say that, look, surveys are not meant for mobile phones because they're too complicated, they're too complex. And uh, this in turn means we are going to sway them away in the future as well, and uh, we are not going to have enough participation. The second point is about sampling in uh, mobile world, and I'll keep this very short because it's something which is already being practiced, and that's more for us as the data collection providers to uh, follow through. The broad couple of points here being, uh, when we look at people who take surveys on different devices, uh, there is a gap in terms of demographics, um, and understandably. So mobile is skewed more towards a younger audience, uh, whereas the traditional device is more towards the older demographics. Um, now, that, well, that can be, uh, uh, you know, through quotas and through uh, uh, stratified sampling, we can overcome that. There, is, there are also attitudinal differences when we look at people who are taking a survey on a mobile on a regular basis versus people who claim to a more traditional uh, way of taking survey on the PCs. So, out of uh, 11 random points that we picked, um, here there are three of them. Um, so, visited a museum, as you can see the line in red indicates that uh, there is a higher traction among people those came and took a survey voluntarily on a PC. And that's understandable because it may be traditional if you if you call it, and uh, that suits uh, that demographics. Whereas clearly buying a smartphone um, and uh, smartphone-related activities is more prominent for people on uh, on a mobile as with the survey. <coughs> the third one is what uh, strikes out as interesting because it seems like a blip where you know we are looking at. There's no real good reason why someone taking a survey on mobile uh, should be spending less time researching a product online. And uh, one of the points here, we then got into a deep dive, we went back to the people and asked them what their interpretation of that uh, point was. And they said, when you say researching a product online, uh, by default we are tuned to think it's computers. Um, whereas the phrase that we would use is, I looked up for something on my phone. So that was an um, insight which we, uh, we didn't realize when we were constructing the questionnaire. And again, that's to say that, you know, as we address the two different demographics, they're not two different people but then there are certainly two different demographics. Um, we've got to bear in mind the semantics as well. Now, quick one, um, you have a lot of people who take surveys on mobile unintentionally, and uh, this is, um, it comes from something I, I did a paper many years back with Microsoft, and it was called glorification of downtime. So typically if I'm waiting at a bus stop, I have 10 minutes to spare before the bus comes. Uh, those are the times which are getting glorified. I mean, that's a space where you know your Pokemon and your gaming um, apps are getting into, and no reason why you know it's not a great time for someone to do a survey. Now, in doing so, it means they are trying to do whatever they can on their mobile phone, and it means um, they didn't plan to do the survey on the mobile, but it's more convenient when uh, they can. So they're called as unintentional mobile takers. So this is not app-based; this is a browser-based survey. But then uh, it's just convenient for them to take on mobile and we can't alienate them, we can't make it difficult for them because the more we do that, the more, uh, the less inclined they will be to come back. And we'll also be cutting out, as we saw, on a clear demographic which has uh, certain attitudinal differences and you know, we'll be skewing it towards uh, one particular group versus the other. So sampling in the mobile world, can we do it? Yes. Um, it's definitely not hard to. And um, again, there is no mobile universe. Like I said, I mean, everyone uses multiple devices. Uh, so it's just to make sure our coverage is comprehensive. Um, by design, yes, we can. But again, I mean, uh, there are some limitations to it. I mean, it all depends on the content and the length of the survey itself. Now, one, um, uh, one trend that's been in the rise in a very interesting world of survey is uh, getting apps to do surveys. And, um, the beauty of it is the app lets you do a lot of different things, a lot of nifty things like you know diary studies and you know a bit of online call um, and all that stuff. Uh, but then it's it's also difficult to keep people engaged on an ongoing basis because I mean I look at my phone, I'm not even a smartphone savvy person, and I've got hundred apps, ninety of which I have no idea why they are. So would I need a hundred and first app on my phone? Um, it it has to have a solid proposition, which means there's got to be constant activity. It's got to be engaging and it's got to be something that's fun. I mean, no one uses smartphone for mundane and boring stuff. The idea is if you're using phone for something outside your basic needs, it's got to be fun, it's got to be entertaining. 
So with that we come to our uh, vicious circle number two. So there are potential, uh, there is a potential for people to work with market research, survey apps. Uh, that's So again, uh, another thing I need to explain is we always tend to think that people do it for incentives, which is partly true, uh, but most of the people that we asked uh, do it because they just love uh, sharing their opinions. And these are the kind of people who you'll also find on social media voicing out their um, you know, reviews and their, you know, whatever comments they have about a product or a service. So it's just in them to share their opinions and that's what we thrive on. So we need to make sure we, we capture it in a meaningful way and not dissuade them from participating in survey. So an example here, this is a vicious circle that we are living in. You know, we get people to download the app. It takes a lot of effort, marketing, and get them to download the app. Now they wait for a survey, and the first survey that comes their way is a 40-minute grid-filled survey, and it's a horror. And that's it. I mean, you've lost a respondent for good, and uh, probably they're never going to attempt any other market research survey. Now, third part of my agenda, this is uh, the interesting one, where we're talking about, so, one is moving what we are doing, the Badila kind of surveys from you know online web to mobile web. The second one is uh, it's all about you know making sure the sampling wise we are covered and we are getting uh, both kinds of people and we are not skewing it one way or the other. Third one is obviously if you get the first two right, uh, it gives us an access to research on mobile, which has been talked about. It's been discussed. I think at every market research forum that I've been to. Um, of course, there are logistical challenges, but then it opens the door to a whole lot of new stuff we could do. An example, easy example is in the moment research. So we do a lot of research where we ask people, uh, what did you eat for breakfast, I don't know, 10 years back or something like that. Um, and we generally test people on their memory and their ability to recall, uh, which again, I mean, um, in the absence of a wiser option, uh, that's the best we have. Now with mobile, with smartphone, if we do it uh, smartly, there is uh, there is a good offering there, you know, where we can actually talk to people in the moment. Uh, so if someone's visiting a Starbucks and you want to ask them how their experience of visiting Starbucks on that particular day was, you can you can make that happen now. If you want to talk to someone doing a mystery shopping um, impromptu, uh, that's that's something we can do. Now, just to show an example, just to um, this is an exercise we did in uh, UK um, and US where we created two groups of people. So one group was called the ITN in the moment, and there was an EOD group which was end of day. Now everything was briefed in the same way to both groups, except the in the moment group was equipped and was asked to provide feedback in the moment. So when they had, this was a snacking study. So every time uh, they thought about a snack or they had a snack, they had to fill something and this was obviously, I mean, they had resources in terms of the app and, um, and, uh, and, and, and all that stuff in place. With the second group, they were asked to just recap at the end of the day uh, stuff that they did in terms of snacking during the course of the day. And there was an exit survey at the end of seven days. Now, what came back is, um, what's interesting about these results is, there was a higher participation, there was a higher um, engaged participation uh, by the first group, which is in the moment, versus the second group. And that's a broad point here, um, which tells me that you know people are willing to participate in in the moment service. So it's not like people are saying, uh, seeing it as an interference. Obviously, I mean, we also have to be mindful of, you know, if someone's snacking, we don't want to send them a 30-minute survey where they have to skip the snacking and answer the survey, which, of course, no one is going to do. Uh, but if we do it properly, if we execute it, people are willing, the willingness is there, it's up to us on how we make it happen. And obviously, I mean, uh, from a results uh, perspective, I mean, the recall, like I said, if you ask me what I ate for breakfast a week back, I might struggle to recall. But if you ask me what I had for breakfast like a couple of hours back, I'll have a pretty good recall. And that's exhibited in the in the numbers when we look at, you know, the average recall, you know, or snacking related uh, recall rates that we're looking at. Now, diary studies have always been there. Um, it's just that with the smartphone and with the technology uh, development, there is a new and a more improved way of doing it in a, I don't know, I mean, there are a lot of nifty things we can do. For instance, there's something that's an experiment going on in the US, where you can look at, you know, your phone can hear what you're watching on TV, and based on that, you know, there could be a survey that gets sent to you. So this is an example of Indonesia now news, the Metro TV news, 
Um, the moment the music comes, the phone can actually detect what you're watching. And this is, again, this is something, like I said, it's been tested out and it's going to transform the media research in a, in a, in a very interesting way. Now, obviously, I mean, um, there is that creepiness uh, that comes with smartphone and digital uh, tracking. So, obviously, I mean, once you have that, you can track people exactly where they are. So, you can do geofencing projects. Um, now, this is an example of uh, our Australia office. Um, this is so on the on the right side here is our Australia office, and on the left here is an adult bookshop. And the problem with geofencing again, um, it's there as a technology. We're using it in uh, markets like US and UK, where you have spaced out stores like IKEA or you know uh, big electronic stores. But then, then you you look at an example like you know this is Sydney or Hong Kong or Singapore, where you have clustered and you know you have crowded malls, uh, there are certain uh, challenges that we are against, you know, so in this case, uh, geofencing is accurate plus minus 10 meters, and here 10 meters can make a difference between an SSI office or an adult bookshop. But I mean, having said that, there are workarounds and there are a lot of things uh, that's up and coming, and if we encourage our respondents to use mobile phones liberally and without any hesitation, uh, those are the areas we can extract and we can export. Now, obviously, when you get someone to answer something in the moment of truth, and especially for you know, customer satisfaction or customer experience surveys, um, it's got a much more powerful resonation when they when they respond versus if you ask them after I don't know, a month or a couple of months. And obviously, you can do a lot of in-store um, in-store. Um, consumer insights, consumer opinions, like, you know, whether it's the store's location, the condition, the purchasing habits, or, you know, even uh, promo testing. So these are these are things which um, we have struggled traditionally. Um, from a technology standpoint, we are there. Um, there are logistical challenges, but then, again, I mean, it's, it's always a case where we keep improving as, as time, time and technology improves. So if there are five things, I wish uh, that you know we as an industry uh, in data collection had known a year ago. One, um, in the moment isn't always in the moment. I think we also need to be mindful of uh, what kind of activity people are into. So if someone is um, in a hospital and we want to do an in the moment survey, probably not such a good idea. Um, again, like geolocation, I, as I exhibited, it's uh, it's there, but then again, it's got its challenges and limitations. So you have to look at the market. You have to look at uh, what kind of stores and what kind of outlets. Um, we have to be, we have to show empathy in terms of mobile survey takers. We've got to speak their language. Uh, we can't exclude them, so we need to be mindful of the fact that people could do the survey on either screen, and uh, our survey shouldn't have any ambiguity around that. And of course, I mean, uh, if we can exploit the use of mobile phone. Uh, apps and in a mobile survey taking, there is a lot of rich content we can bring into the otherwise boring survey. So we did this um, we did this project where we worked with a video response technology company and instead of capturing verbatims in text, we got people to actually record a video and share their open-ended comments about things. And generally, even if it's uh, 5 out of 100 responses we get in video form, when clients look at it, they get far richer insights and it just blows everyone's mind because it's quality data and it's it's real consumers who are talking back to your brands. And of course, I mean, once uh, we start harnessing the power of smartphone and mobile-based uh, survey, uh, we can uh, diminish the paradigm difference between quant and qual. Uh, we can start doing a whole lot of things um, like, you know, getting people to capture videos and photos and, you know, even mobile ethnography studies. So this brings us to the last vicious circle, which is um, I think the capability is there. Um, we need to work in tandem as market research agencies, consultants, uh, buyers of market research, and providers of data. To summarize, um, using mobile device to conduct a standard service, I think from a capability standpoint, it's there, but we are just not doing enough. Sampling in mobile world is something we are doing, and it's it's very much possible. It's not a hindrance. Using mobile as a device to do uh, more nifty research of future and forward-looking research um, is something we could do better. I think it started in uh, in the developed markets, 
But I, I wouldn't be surprised if it hits Indonesia, which is, like I said, a mobile first nation in a big way in the next, I would say, probably max two years. <coughs> and that's that's about it. I mean, so I think uh, there's a lot, there's a lot more that could happen um, in terms of, you know, at an industry level, at a, at a technology level. Um, our CEO calls our company a technology company. He hates to be uh, bracketed as a market research survey data collection. He thinks it's too boring and it's too is to parochial. Um, and in that participant experience is the key. I mean, the, the day we start pissing our respondents off is when we go off business. At least we go first and then uh, probably some of you will follow. Um, from an industry perspective, I guess it's imperative that you know, companies like us come forward and educate and share this. So this is something I encourage my team to do a lot, to speak to the clients and you know, push back when need be. Um, Again, finding new places in terms of technology, in terms of avenues where we can uh, extract more value from market research at a, at a at a decent pace. You know, where we don't lose out on on on, on the number of uh, surveys we do, but then we just do it differently and get more value out of it. And again, we've got to be bold and try. I mean, unless we try, we never know. Um, that's that's a challenge that's up for us as the agencies. Again, there are times when we get conservative and we are hesitant to try. Uh, but I guess again, uh, we need to work in tandem and understand. So that's it from Singapore. Thank you.